Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday edition for Waves of Hope. We're glad that you're with us. We're always glad that you join us. And we just, uh, we're just so happy about this place. It's starting to pick up. And some crew members on cargo ships are allowed. To, they're letting them off the ships. And we're, we're just praying that they start letting their crew members on the passenger ships, on the cruise ships to, to get off and to go shopping or come here. We'd love for you to come here. We can't wait. But, uh, you know, our prayers and love are always with you. And we know that some are traveling right now to get to their ships. And even though they're on one, they're very, uh, their staff is low. But they're trying to keep it, I guess, keep it to a minimum until they get more passengers. But just hang in there and be strong and uh, just uh, keep talking to our God, to your Lord, and just pray for that courage and that strength and the excitement. It's building, and I know it, it's going to happen. Right, Josh? It's going to happen. So we, we've got a, a wonderful worship for you. We've got Vivian singing for you and Rodney with an, another inspiring message from him. And before uh, Vivian sings, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much. We, Lord, you, you blessed us so much, and yet we are still sinners, but you love us. You still love us. And Lord, forgive us for through difficult times it is really in some places really horrific year some worse than others and it's just but you're still there with us you you have always been there for us lord forgive us for sometimes that we are not there for you because we feel sorry and we depend upon ourselves and not you. And we just ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you so much that you would never and will never give up on us because we are your children and you love us, period. There's nothing we can change about that. You love us. And we just thank you so much. And we just ask for your continued blessings on the crew members around the world that are looking to get back on the ships, on their ships, and those that are in the process and those that are on the ships. Lord, we just pray that you be with them and bless them with encouragement and the peace in their hearts, knowing that you are with them. You are going to see them through their contracts, and as hard as they work, just I pray that you bless them with the strength and the, the health to keep going and just bless their hearts and their souls. and. We are, we are so grateful. Lord, we, we thank you for this opportunity that we, are, we can share with, with those and just try to encourage through your word. We pray that you bless Rodney with the words that inspire those that are just looking for a pick-me-up, just encouragement. We give you all the things. We give you all the glory. In your most loving and merciful name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord, he is jealous for me, loves like a hurricane, I am a tree, bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us how he loves us so. He is jealous for me. Loves like a hurricane. 
I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. Oh, when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Oh, 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 how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Good morning. What a great song. It's interesting how Bob shared that he loves us, period, unconditionally, and the same thing we hear in our song this morning. Um, I always like to be comforted when I think of the thought that there's nothing I can do today that will stop God from loving me. There's nothing I can do today that will make him love me more. He loves me unconditionally just as I am, as we kind of sing in that hymn. We can come to him just as we are. So that's always a comforting thing. Well, welcome to the Waves of Hope. We are in Psalm chapter 12 today. I'm going to read the entire psalm. I'm going to read about the first half and then kind of share some thoughts. And then I'll do the same with the second half. And I hope when we get done today with this psalm, you'll you'll have a little bit better understanding of exactly who you can trust and maybe not be as upset or as um, overcome by those that are in your life that perhaps you can't fully trust at times. Maybe they mean well, but they say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. Or it could be that you're involved with people, whether it's the workplace or people in your neighborhood or wherever, where they just don't seem to care about your well-being. And sadly, the world is full of people like that who maybe don't intentionally want to hurt you, but they're worried about themselves first and foremost. And your kind of collateral damage at times, if that offended you or hurt you, or if, if we couldn't take care of you because I was taking care of me, that's how some people live. Now, we know as believers, we shouldn't live that way, that we should honor others before ourselves and certainly consider others and have compassion for others. I always love in any of the Gospels when we see the activities of... Uh, of our Savior Jesus and things he did. And so often you'll see it says, but he had compassion for the people. And that's what we can do is we go about our daily lives. We can kind of try to take care of our own and at times take care of ourselves, but not at the cost of others. So Psalm chapter 12 is a Psalm of David. And, and David, I think to a degree is kind of, as we say here in the States, up to here with some things going on in the world. And he's not even so much concerned about himself as he is the nation of Israel. So I'm going to read the first four verses of Psalm 12. 
He says, help, O Lord, for the godly are fast disappearing. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. May the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silence their boastful tongues. They say, we will lie to our heart's content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? That's a dangerous statement and a dangerous question to say, who can stop us? So David here is saying, and like we see this a lot perhaps in our own world, we see it in the Bible with people like Jeremiah and Elijah and others who feel like they're the only ones left, the only one doing the right thing. And, and that's very common in today's world. If you're in a relationship, there may be at times where somebody says the words always or never. When my wife and I have conversations, I'm always quick if she says always because I can be right here for a second and I'm like, always? I always do this? And of course, she doesn't mean I always do it, but we're quick to think we're the only one. Nobody ever does this or everybody always does that. And there can be a lot of truth in those statements. And David here is at a point where he thinks there's no godly left. The godly have vanished from the earth. He says the faithful have vanished from the earth. The godly are fast are fast disappearing. So he's like, man, it's getting bad, and it's, it's only going to get worse, it seems. And he brings up these lying lips, these flattering tongues. Um, we often have to think of, of the word truth and, and what it means to us and how important it is. Um, there are times that people will lie to us, times that we perhaps won't quite share the full truth, and, and we'll, say that, we'll say that about our own words at times. Well, I didn't tell them everything, or I didn't fully, because we want to justify why we said what we said. And David here is saying it's kind of hard to find just an honest person. And honesty is something that should be kind of a foundation of our Christian life. Now, there may be times we kind of use a little bit of wisdom, but with people we love and in certain situations, we want to tell them what we think God has planned for them or what God's put on our heart about this situation. But there are those who aren't godly at all, who aren't believers. We can't expect their behavior to be honest. So we're going to have to deal with unbelievers in this world. That's just the way it is. Hopefully we'll be that shining example, that light in darkness. But until they commit themselves to a life of of love and honesty and truth and submitting themselves to their Lord and Savior, they're probably not going to be totally focused on their words and their actions. If it benefits them, they're kind of good with it. Um, So often we we want to kind of promote ourselves and and others want to do the same thing. And, And that's what David said he was kind of experiencing at that point in time. And, and David seemed to be aware that the world was getting worse, and David didn't have the internet, he didn't have 24-hour news, he didn't have social media, all the things we have. You may read David's words and say, man, if it was bad then, you ought to see how bad it is now. Because we tend to get all the news that's fit to not even print anymore, all the news that's fit to be shown across the world. And if there's murders and governments doing wrong and, and health issues and, and weather-related issues, whatever, we can know about it in seconds, what's going on in Iran in seconds, what's going on in any country around the world, we can know in seconds. Back then, that wasn't the case, but David was looking at his world. He was a powerful man. He saw what his people were trying to do to perhaps do good under his leadership. And he saw what the enemy was doing to him. So he felt that kind of the godly are fastly disappearing and perhaps sin is increasing. Well, thousands of years later, we can see the same thing in our world. And, and part of the reason is because, like I said, we have more access to more information. But something else we need to really realize, as David's kind of saying, what's going on with the people and, and they're doing wrong, it seems like sin is increasing. Well, guess what? Then, and even more so now perhaps, the reason we feel like sin is increasing is because sin is probably increasing. Um, Sadly, I can't say for sure that this country or this nation or the world is drawing closer to God. There are those who are, and God's work is not finished yet. 
But if you're thinking there will be no wars, there will be all peace, there will be all happiness, there will be all comfort, there will be no stress, that was never God's plan. It's what are we going to do in spite of it? And who are we going to trust to fix it? If we want those things in life, can man give us those things? I would tell you that no, nobody can give you those things. God can give you those things. No human can. I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. And this speaking of truth is kind of a big deal. Obviously, we, we know, you know, um, thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not lie and bear false witness and all those things. It's important that we understand how important truth is. So in the book of Romans, this is Paul, and he's talking about God's anger at sin of any kind, and certainly truth and lying lips and these flattering lips that, that, that Paul, or not Paul, that David has says, cut off those lips. It's important. It's important to God. So in chapter 1 of Romans, verse 18 says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So the truth is important, right? They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. So now in the New Testament, we're seeing, you know, truth is important and you should know the truth. Look around and see what God's created. So if you know what God's created, maybe you know there is a God. And what does God stand for? Does God give us flattering lips and tell us things that aren't true that we want to hear? God doesn't. God loves us enough to be honest with us. Verse 21, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give thanks. So David's saying, you know, the godly are fastly disappearing. If they ever knew God, they're not drawing close to him now. They're running the other way. It says they begin to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. This was written, you know, right at 2,000 years ago. We do that today. We want to put God in a certain personality or a certain context and say that's who God is. When we have the opportunity to have the full experience of God, the love, the concern, the correction, the discipline, the forgiveness, the grace, all those things are a part of who God is. The instruction, the leadership, the quietness of him at times. These are all things with God, but it said they began to think up foolish ideas of who God was. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. So David has said that. They're they're flattering, they're being deceitful, they're saying things people want to hear. And it goes on to say, and instead of worshiping, instead of worshiping the glorious living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles, which was certainly something going on back then. We may not see it so much now, but there are parts of the world who still have those kind of gods they worship. So verse in, in, in the book of Romans, it says what God kind of does with those people, and it says, so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and evil and degrading things with each other's bodies. And the last thing you need to hear is, is they traded the truth about God for a lie. So we've got to know what the truth is. The truth is important. We've got to know what God wants for us. We've got to know that we can't use those flattering lips to tell people what they want, maybe to get what we want. And that's usually the reason most people lie. If somebody you feel is on a regular basis telling you things that aren't quite true, they're probably doing it for one reason, to get what they want. Maybe they want your approval so they don't tell you about certain things. Or maybe they want your praise so they kind of embellish or exaggerate or say they've done things they haven't. Maybe they make promises so you'll relax and not kind of hold them accountable and say, well, they said they were going to. I'm just going to have to trust them. I hope you have people in your life you can trust. And that's certainly a wonderful thing when it's spouses or families or coworkers or bosses or those in authority that we can trust and we know they have our interest in mind. But that may not be the case. They may flatter you to get what they want. They may have a double heart, right, where we're like, I'm not sure what their intentions were. This is what they said. I'm thinking they're going to use that later on to get something from me or whatever. So David's had it up 
to hear with them, as I said, and he'd like cut off their flattering lips. We need to just stop it right here and now. I don't, I don't uh, want this to go on in my world, in my society, and, and God, you're, you can do something about it. So at that time, the Lord kind of begins to speak to David in this psalm, and he says in verse 5, the Lord replies here, I have seen violence done to the helpless. I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them as they have longed for me to do. And I spoke of promises. This is what we need to know about anything God tells us, anything God puts on our heart. If you hear something that doesn't seem right, perhaps investigate a little bit, perhaps get around those people who you know you can trust and say, they said this, what do you think? My boss or my company's doing this, what do you think? Or I've thought this on my own. I've asked these people questions. I hope they're giving me a clear picture. What do you think? And certainly going to God in prayer is a great way to kind of rationalize and understand, are they telling me what I need to hear? Or are they telling me the truth? So verse 6 in chapter 12 of Psalms, it says, The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a, in a furnace, purified seven times over. We know any metal that goes through fire over and over again gets stronger, gets uh, more valuable. So we know it's like putting silver in a furnace seven times over. It's going to be pure quality steel. Anything, any of the impurities have been have, have have been melted out. So he finishes up Psalms here. He says, "Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying nation." Evil though the wicked strut about and evil is pray even though the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. So you may not be able to, and most likely you won't be able to get everybody around you to be the honest, fair, compassionate, God honoring, people loving person. Hopefully you'll have enough of those around you, and a lot of times it's when you separate from the world and gather with believers. It may be a church setting, it may be something you watch, it may be something like this service for 20, 30 minutes, I kind of shut the world out and listen to somebody sharing about the Word of God, somebody sharing about what God has done for them or what God wants to do for you. Those are ways we can kind of protect ourselves. Those are ways we can kind of focus on God's promises and God's Word. And this whole psalm is kind of talking about those who can be taken advantage of. Uh, Quite often, it's not those perhaps friends or those uh, maybe even family or coworkers that can do damage to us by their flying or by 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 their flattering lips or their lying lips. It's those who are in power, those who have authority, and, and we've seen it happen. We're seeing it happen now in our world and in many countries with the way the government is dealing with people uh, here in the United States. You know, we have about a 50-50 division on about everything. It seems like. So there are those who think the government's reaching too far. There are those who think the government's not doing enough. I always encourage everybody, don't get wrapped up in what the government or the governor or the president or this organization can do for you. Get wrapped up in what God can do for you. And sometimes knowing more of what God's plan is will give you more peace and comfort than anything about what some entity, some organization, some structure, some administration is going to do for you. What can God do for you? And I think of Psalms 5, because, I'm not sorry, I, I, th- I, I, I think of Matthew 5. Psalms 12 is kind of talking about those who don't have as much power, don't have as much authority. They're kind of, uh, they're kind of um, at the request, um, at the beckoning of what people tell them to do. Perhaps the poor, you know, perhaps those who are, are mourning or grieving, those who have no power, those who are weak. And what's God saying about those people? What's God's plans for those? And God made it very clear in the words of Jesus speaking, the Sermon on the Mount. It says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. So if somebody's lying to you about things that you wish they would be honest and tell you the truth because you need certain things from them, you can get all you need from God. It may not be here on earth, but he'll give you that strength and that courage. When you're weak, he'll be strong to get you through perhaps those false dealings by people. It goes on to say, those who are mourned will be comforted. Those who are humble, they will inherit the earth. Those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Those who are merciful, they will be shown shown mercy. 
Those who work for peace, they will be called the children of God. So it goes on and on that if they put your, their trust in God, you're going to be taken care of very well. At times, we can't trust men. It's sad. We can't trust people who speak to us at times. And I hope you're not on a regular basis surrounded by those kind of people. If you are, if at all possible, you can move away from them. You can maybe pull out of that relationship a little bit. That may be helpful. Sometimes you can't. It's coworkers. It's bosses. It's neighbors. So instead of getting wrapped up in what they're doing to you to get what they want, I want you to get kind of wrapped up in what God's doing for you and with you and with this situation, not to get what he wants, to get what we need. His, his care and his concern is our needs and our benefits. If, if we need mercy, mercy is given. If we need justice, justice is given. He's not looking to make us necessarily right and everything, but he's looking to show us that he's right in all he does, that his words are pure. Seven times over, it says. So life happens to us. There are times where we're not dealt with fairly. There are times when we feel probably like David felt right here, that we're one of the few. You may be the only believer in your family or in your big circle of people that you interact with daily. You may be the only one who shows an interest in, in living for the Lord and, and uh, trying to repent from sin and seeking a godly life. David said in the beginning here, the godly are fastly disappearing. You may feel, yeah, I'm, a, I'm alone more and more, it seems like. And that's why it's great to find that group of believers, people who feel the same way you feel. If you're poor in spirit, if you're you know depressed, you don't have to run away from the world. You just have to run towards God, that him turn your eyes upon Jesus. If you turn your eyes upon him, the things of the world kind of don't seem as important. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's what Psalm 12 here is saying. At the end, it says, even though all this evil and corruption is around us, God will take care of us. God's promises are always kept. So I encourage you to find that quiet time on a regular basis. If you know you're going into situations where, well, I've got to interact in this situation, and I know it's going to cause me stress. Before they've disappointed me, I don't know if I can trust them. They seem to do it without reason, or they seem to not understand it has an effect on me. Maybe you've talked to them about promises and things where they've kind of failed you or fallen short, and their answer is, you know what, that's just what happens. Deal with it. And you're like, I can't deal with it. It struggles me. I, I have a struggle with it. My heart hurts because of it. Then draw into God's word. Take that quiet time. We kind of like to do it in the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, at the end of the day. You may have to do it before certain events or right after certain events. Dave is making it clear that his trust, and he does this throughout the Psalms, and he lived a pretty hard life where he had a lot of people who were yes men. He had his own sinful nature. He had those who would help him lie to others. Every now and then, like all of us, he had somebody that God put in his life that, that told him the truth. We know a big thing in the life of David was Nathan when he said, here's what's going on, and it ain't good, and you're a part of it. You're in the middle of it. You're part of this deceit. You're part of these lying lips. And David need to, he, he obviously needed to hear that. David was concerned about the nation, not just concerned about himself. So it may be people in your life that it's not so much you, but you see them being victim of some situation, and it brings sadness to your heart. So you can go to God and say, please speak into their life. Please open their ears so they're hear they'll hear what you have to say. I, I thought this week about, you know, all the evil we see out there, and, and you can see it probably in your own community at times. We can see it in our own family. Uh, they're here in the States. It's very divided on how we should react, whether we should still stay at home or whether we should go out in public. What should we do about the vaccine? What should we do about the masks? There's, there's a lot of division, and, and sometimes it brings a lot of pressure and tension to situations. And there are people who will exaggerate their belief and say, well, I read, and I'm always, I'm always kind of a little bit hesitant to believe what people said they read or they heard because I'm like, I don't know that that's true. Maybe they mean well. Maybe they misunderstood. But I was thinking this week about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, of all things. If you've ever seen that show, it's 
went on for, I think, 30 or 40 years. And he was kind of made fun of at times with the way he spoke. He, vote, he spoke very softly. He kind of used very few words to get points across. And he really was an amazing man. He's passed on. There's a great movie that I enjoy called, it's actually called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And it's just a little, maybe six month or one year uh, part of Fred Rogers' life with this one guy who wrote a news article about him and it kind of the impact he had on his life. But Fred Rogers said when he was a kid and he would see things that were upsetting to him or things would happen in school, and this kind of choked me up, His he said his mom would say, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. And in almost every situation, if you've got people lying to you, here David thought he was alone. And, and God can give us a lot better advice than just look for the helpers. But I think sometimes that's what God's telling us. There are believers out there. There are people who feel the same way that you feel. Look for them. Find them. Join up with them. Consult with them. Listen to them and ask them to listen to you. Ask them to be honest. There are times you may ask somebody, can I be honest with you? And we do it out of love, right? We say, I love you with all my heart, but this is something that maybe we can work on together. Or maybe you're convicted about things you've said and done, so you ask somebody, Will you please be honest with me and hold me accountable? Truth is a big deal, right? How we treat others, how we interact with others is important. And David's concern was there's nobody around anymore that seems to care about truth. And because they don't care about truth, they have this attitude, I can say what I want, I can do what I want, who's going to stop me? And the Lord kind of intercedes there and says, I'm going to take care of those things. My word is believable. My promises are believable. So I'm going to ask you today and, and certainly for the next week or two to maybe focus on the truth at all times. You know, when you get into a courtroom, they make you hold your hand up and say, do you swear to tell the truth? Now, you have to be careful. There are times you may choose to, you know, I'm not going to tell somebody they need to lose 10 pounds because they don't want to hear that or whatever. Um, but th- when it comes to matters of the heart, when it comes to matters of what God wants, when it comes to are we going to put their needs before ours? Are we going to honor them above ourselves? Are we going to trust what God says and not what man says? Here in the state, so many people have put their complete trust in one man or one government situation. And I'm like, I hope it works out for you. So often it doesn't. We've kind of proved as mankind over and over and over again that we can't take care of ourselves very well. But those who seek God seem to feel like, you know what, I'm being taken care of by a loving God. And that's my prayer for you that you seek truth. We know that even Pilate, when Jesus was on trial, and Pilate, we don't know for sure what his, his whole thought life was and what he was trying to accomplish at times, but Pilate knew that truth was important. And in John 18, 38, Pilate said, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, and he said to them, I find no fault in him at all. The truth matters. You can trust God for the truth. You can trust God's word for the truth. You can trust God's promises for the truth. I hope you have a group of believers around you that you can say, let's spend time together talking about whatever your concern is, whatever their concern is, and say we've got to be truthful and honest with each other. And the great thing I hope you know today, and if if, if you've got nothing else from this, I can introduce you to the most important truth in your life. And it's very simple that God loves you so much that he gave a Savior that all your sin will be forgiven, all your past sin, all your present sin, all your future sin. That salvation that we talk of is kind of a three-phase thing. We are saved from all that we've done, we're saved from what we're doing now, and we're saved from what we're going to do. And certainly when we get to heaven, when our body is done on this earth, we're saved from a judgment that would send us to hell for eternity. But because of Jesus on the cross, Our sins are forgiven. We have access and we have membership and we have entrance into paradise, as Jesus called it. He told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. We have access to all that because of God's great honesty, his great love, his great compassion. And the truth that he told is as true then as it is now. And the words that Jesus said in John 14, 6, are as true as they were 2,000 years ago as they are now. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will never find somebody who loves you more and will be more honest with you. 
You may have guilt that comes in your heart. You may have frustration because of your action. And that's God saying, I love you so much. I want you to work on that. I want to work with you. Just like you do with the, with the believer. You say, what can I do to help you in this situation? Or you go to somebody and say, will you please help me? That's God's permanent position with us. I'm here to help. You've got to follow me. You've got to trust me. You've got to believe me. My words are pure. Seven times over. So if you're like David at times, thinking you're all alone, I want you to know you're not. And if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I'm going to close this in prayer, and I'm going to, I'm going to pray that prayer for anybody who may be out there who says, I've never given myself to Christ. I've never given my life to Christ. I've never asked him to forgive all of my sins. I've never pursued him and said, I want to live for you now. I want Christ in me. I want the Holy Spirit in me to help me make decisions and handle emotions. I want all of that. And you can have that. The minute you feel it in your heart and you ask God to come in your heart, it happens instantly and you begin this beautiful journey, this beautiful relationship where you grow and mature. We have words like getting sanctified and all those kind of things where we get closer to God. That's his plan for you. That's my prayer for you. So I thank you for joining us today in Psalm 12. I'm going to close this in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that David had such a great heart. And we know how much you used him in so many ways. And he was willing to be used. He was willing to kind of put himself aside and say, what is it God wants me to do? He was certainly flawed, just like anybody watching this today, Lord. We certainly don't become perfect when we accept Christ. And we certainly don't have to become perfect before we can have that relationship. So, Lord, I pray if there's one person, even one person here today that says, I don't know who Jesus is, I don't know exactly what it means, that you will put on their heart that it's a simple belief, that it's a simple faith that says, I believe, I can see all that God's created, and I believe what the Word of God says. I believe that his son walked on this earth, that God came to the earth in the flesh, and he walked on earth, and he talked on earth, and he showed us how to live. And those words that we just read on the Sermon on the Mount, through all the Gospels, all these words of Jesus, are true and honest and pure seven times over. Seven times over. And the fact that he says, I go and prepare a place for you is true. And if we want to have access to that place, if we want to be a part of that eternity in heaven, we need to, while we're on earth, accept the gift of a Savior. So if there's someone here today, I pray that they'll say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't fix my sin problem. I know I can't work and do good enough to get to heaven. But I know I can accept the gift that your son died on the cross, that his blood covered my sins, and that your plan was that would happen, and then he would be resurrected, and he would live again, and he would stay on earth a while, and then he would ascend to heaven. And I know if I believe all that, his spirit begins to live in me. And I know he's alive and well at the right hand of God, and he's preparing this place that I'm going to end up in one day. So while I'm here on earth struggling with perhaps people who don't have my best interest in heart, I can take peace and comfort and confidence in knowing God knows what's best for me. God's using all this to work for the good because I have chosen to live for him. I have been called according to his purpose. So if you've prayed that prayer today, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, I pray maybe you'll send an email to the port ministry, to the seafarers ministry, and say, I want you to know that I gave my life to Christ today. And, and we're going to encourage you and pray for you. And we know who you are. We're going to try to find resources for you. And I hope wherever you're at, you'll begin to share with others. I made a decision today, a decision that affects, that, that affects eternity. And I'm going to try to be honest in, in more ways and try to be honest about myself and honest about what God wants for me. Because God wants the best for you because he loves you. And he has given everything he can. He's given his only son that you may have a future, a future in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. We pray that you'll surround us with truth and we'll seek truth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a great day. I hope you seek God's presence and his truth, and you can find it in his word and with his believers. Have a great day. Thank you.